21 years, let's give it up for God. 21 years is a long, a long time. But it seems just like yesterday, amen? But God is the only one that gave me the strength. God is the only one that I ran to in times of trouble. God is the only one that got me here today. And I'm not here to boast about me. I'm here to boast about my Jesus. Hallelujah. So today's message is going to be in the book of Psalms 91. Safety, safety in the presence of God. First, I'm going to go to the book of Psalms in the, in the chapter 34, and then I'm going to go back to Psalm 91, okay? So when you have um, Psalms 34, you can stand. If you don't have a Bible, share with your neighbor. Don't share with nobody's wife. Share with a neighbor, okay? We don't want no fights in here today. Psalms 34. Everybody have it? Thank you, Lord. The word of God says in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I will bless the Lord all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. My soul will make its boast in the Lord. The humble will hear it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord. And he answered me, and he delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and became radiant, and their faces are not ashamed. The poor man cried, and the Lord heard, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord accompts around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you saints, for the ones who fear him will not be in need. Verse 10. The young lions are in want and suffer hunger, but the ones who seek the Lord will not lack any good thing. Come, come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord, who is the, who is the man who desires life and loves a long life in order to see good. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away. Tell your neighbor, turn away. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteousness, and his, his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against the one doing evil, to cut off the memory of them from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and saves the country of spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteousness, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. A righteous one will keep all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Evil will, will slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants, and all who take refuge in him will not be punished. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you right now, Lord. We thank you, Father God, because it's a privilege, Lord, to be up here and preach the gospel to all creatures, Father God. I ask you to remove me and let it be you speaking through me, Father God. We ask you all this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the righteous people of God say, Amen. Amen. You, be, you may be seated. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, brothers and sisters. We have so much, brothers and sisters, to thank God. We have so much reasons to thank God. God is a continual thing. 
You can't come to church on Wednesdays and then not come on Sundays. This is a continual thing. We need to stay in the presence of God because that is our safety. That is our strong tower. My soul makes it, it boasts in the Lord. The humble will hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Have you been delivered from drugs? Have you been healed from sickness? Have you been delivered from oppression? Have you been healed by depression? Have you been touched by the presence of God? Magnify the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Oh, taste and see the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you saints, for the ones who fear him will not be in need. The fear of the Lord is to have reverence for God. I'm a woman of God. You're a man and a woman of God. We have to have reverence for God, and we have to have reverence for, us, for ourselves. Can I hear an amen? Amen. The old Janie was wild and crazy and partying, but the new Janie, hallelujah, has reverence for the Lord, has reverence for herself. I cannot be playing games with the Lord anymore. Before I was naive in the word of God, I didn't know about God. So God said, you're all right, you're all right. Uh, uh, I'm going to get you one day. God is a righteous God. God is a just God. God is a, a faithful God. So that means that I need to be faithful. I need to be just. I need to be righteous in the eyes of God. We need to keep our tongues from evil and your lips from speak, speaking deceit. Amen. Our tongues, to all, all our, our vo words that come out of our mouth, it should be nothing but blessings. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for Jesus. I mean, we don't get tired of saying that God is good. Amen. You cannot get tired of saying God is good. Because God has done so many things in our life. And thank you, Jesus, that we're here in his presence. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Psalms 91. Ready? He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the hunter and from the deadly pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wing you shall find protection. His faithfulness shall be your shield and wall. Verse 5. He shall not, you shall not be afraid of the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that pursues in the darkness, nor of the destruction that strikes at noonday. A thousand may fall on your side and 10,000 on your right, but it will not come near you. Yeah. Only if you, only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because you and I have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling, there shall be no evil before you, neither shall a plaque come near your tent. For he shall give his angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and utter the, long li the lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. 14. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him high because he has known my name. He shall call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble and I will deliver him. Honor him 
With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Brothers and sisters, if it wouldn't be for the Lord, I wouldn't be where I am today. Have I messed up? Yes, I have. Have I made mistakes? Yes, I have. But you know what? You're, when you're in the presence of God, hallelujah, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that he is the son of God. If there's things in my life that I need to remove, hallelujah, me praising God, me in the presence of God, God will see my heart and he will help me through. Amen. Coming to church is good. Don't get me wrong. Coming to church is good. We come and worship. We come and hear the word. Man, it was good. But it's when we walk out those doors. Hallelujah. It's when we walk out those doors. Are you still in the presence of God? Are you still under the shadow of the Most High? Are you still in God's covenant? Are you still doing what God called you to do? Being in the presence of God is doing what God called you to do. Amen. It's no longer I that lives, but it's Christ that lives in me. So when I walk out of the door, it's no longer I that lives in me. It's Christ that lives in me. I got to be Christ-like. How I act, how I dress, how I speak, how I walk, who I hang around with. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. In verse 1 and 2, it talks about the presence. He who dwells in the shadow of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Now, if you're under something else and you don't feel it, I recommend you tonight that you turn back to the presence of God and let God be in your face and you be in God's face. Verse 3 and 4, God's protection. God has protected us for many, many ways and many, many things. Amen. Sometimes we blame God. Oh, why is this happening to me? It's not because God is not protecting you. It's because we're doing whatever we want. I got in trouble. I got out of the presence of God. Because when you're in the presence of God, hallelujah, he said he will take care of you. He will protect you. He will deliver you from the hands of the wicked. He is our protection, refuge, a safe place from pursuit of danger. If you know that you're not in the presence of God and you're doing whatever you want, I'm gonna tell you that you better be very careful. Very, very careful because we don't play with God. Tell your neighbor, don't play with God. Don't play with God. He is our protector. He protects us from a lot of things. Amen. Five and six, it talks about God's peace. God gives you a peace that surpasses all understanding. I have so much peace in me that I don't even worry about anything. Hallelujah. I don't even worry if you like me or not. I don't even worry if you want me to preach or not because the appearance of peace is in me. Hallelujah. I'm not here to please no one. I'm here to please God. So if you're rolling your eyes on me right now, you better take it up with the Holy Spirit because God says in his word, do not, do not mess with my anointed one. God has a provision for each and one of us. People might not see it, but God does. David was a man after God's heart. David was after God's heart. He made many mistakes, just like I did. I came to the altar in my 21 years. Come on now. I came to the altar with the same thing. But I cried to God, and he heard me. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. I, I sought the Lord, and he rescued me. I sought the Lord, and he delivered me. The same thing 
But God never said, Janie, here you come again with the same thing, girl. You better get it together. He didn't say that. He said, it's okay, my daughter. You're not working process. I am the potter. You're the clay. I'm going to do something with your life. Just hold on tight. Continue seeking my face. Continue coming to the altar. God's power is the one that changed me. Not my own power. Not my friend's power. Not my family's power but the power of the Almighty. Because that's who God is. No counselor could took the pain away. No psychiatrist could deliver my, my thoughts. No psychiatrist could make me feel the way God makes me feel. They were just driving me crazy. You know they get paid to drive us crazy? You go in there and you tell them, oh, you know what, I'm hearing voices. There's a pill for those voices. You know what? I can't sleep. Those voices are killing me. There's another pill so you can sleep. You're going to go to the doctor. He's going to give you what you're telling him. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, that I came back to my senses. Because I was in the state hospital a couple of times, a lot of times. I almost made territory in there. I almost dwell in there. But thank you, Jesus. And he said, hey, 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 hey. Wait up, devil. Wait up, devil. That's my daughter. That's my preacher. That's my vessel. That's the one that I'm going to use to put you under your feet. That's the one that I'm going to use to bring souls to know Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Get your filthy hands off of her. Get your filthy hands off of her. And here I am after 21 years. We didn't know better. I don't drink no pills. My kids know that. Do you have a, a pill for my head hurts? Let me pray for you, sister. My back hurts. Let me pray for you. Even my grandkids, Grandma, I have a cut. It's okay, Mama. You know what I'm going to do? Yes, I know. You're going to pray for me, and I'm going to get healed. I don't drink Tylenol. I don't drink NyQuil to go to sleep. I stay in the presence of God, and the presence of God puts me to sleep. Why? Because he gives me that peace not to worry about my children, not to worry about my finances, not to worry about my health, but to trust in him. Let's give it up for Jesus. God keeps you safe if you want him to keep you safe. Amen. God will meet your needs. He will provide for all your needs. Us. Oh, my God. The other day I told my daughter, man, I saw my bank card. Mi rancho. Yacil. Bill Miller's. Taqueria Vallarta. McDonald's. Man, I'm like, whoa. Whoa. I spend more money in the restaurants. Now that's not good. But you know what? God says, Janie, bless those that bless you. And don't worry about if your bank goes empty. I'm going to fill it up again. Why? Because you, that's how much you trust in me. I tell my brother and my son-in-law, there's more from where that came from. <laughs> I serve a rich God, hallelujah. Why am I going to complain? Why am I going to worry, hallelujah? God will provide for all your needs. It's a key to go to the restaurant. So if you see me in different restaurants, like, hijo me la pastora? She's in the restaurant again? There's a lot of people here that I have, half of the church, that I have taken you out to eat, Amen. Not because I'm boasting, but because God said, I will provide for you. I will take care of all your needs. God, in the, adver and in the adversity, God delivers and helps you. And he will help you reach your goal. 
I might, I might not have been able to reach my goal when I didn't know God, but I'm going to reach my goal, hallelujah, because I have God, hallelujah. In the adversity, your difficulties, your troubles, your hardship, your distress, your suffering, your afflictions, sorrow, misery, heartbreak, pain, trauma, just know that God is with you. Hallelujah. Maybe there, maybe there have been times in your life when you try to run away from God. Has anybody tried to run away from God? Or is anybody today running away from God? Wow. Y'all really into God, huh? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I tried running away from God maybe like 10 years ago. God told me, Janie, you need to stop doing what you're doing. And I, I, I tried, but it was hard. I was in the flesh. I was struggling. I wasn't in the presence of God as much. But when you cry out to the Lord, he answers you. I cried and I cried and I cried and I cried. And I said, God, I don't want this no more. I'm tired. And he heard my cry. I ended up in the intensive care maybe like 10 years. I mean 10 years. I'm sorry. Like maybe like 10 days or more. Because God heard my cry. Not because he put me in there. He wanted to grab my attention. God sometimes they put us in situations not to harm you, not to kill you, but to grab your attention. As I was laying on the bed, I, I, I saw and heard the doctor telling my daughter Maria, I don't know what's going on. We cannot, we, her, her, her blood level is so low. We can't get it up. And I saw my tears come out because at the same time that the doctor was talking to my daughter Maria, the doctor of doctors was talking to me. You know why you're there? And I'm like, yes, Lord. You know why you're there? I say, yes. I heard your cry. And I'm going to help you. But when I get you back off that bed, you're going to stop what you're doing. And I'm like, yes, Lord. And I was looking at Maria like, don't listen to them. I know why I'm here, daughter. Because I was turning away from God. I ran from the presence of God. I know why I'm here. Sometimes we know why we're there. But we pretend like we don't know. And we want to play, we want to blame God. But God said, you know what, Janie? I'm going to lift you up because I know your heart. See, God, I could tell God, you know what? I ain't going to do it anymore. And he would pick me up and go do the same thing. But literally, God, I heard God say, Janie, I'm going to pick you up. But you ain't going to do what you're doing no more. And you know why? I'm going to let you another chance because God is a God of chances. Amen? But don't take advantage of it either. He said, I'm going to let you back up because I know your heart. I know you were struggling. I know you were fighting. I know you wanted those chains to be broken and you were not able. But because I know your heart, I'm going to let you up again. But let me tell you one thing, Janie. Do not play with me again. Because next time, I'm going to put you back and I'm going to leave you there for a long time. And that's where the fear of the Lord came to my life. I don't play with God. In the book of Jonah, 116 Jonah turned from the presence of God God told him to do something and he ended up in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights but God is so good and merciful that he let him out again spit him out come on that's what he said to me let her up I went in my room and I, you know, I used to wear chongo and my lippy sticky. Everybody knows about my lippy sticky. 
I had a little crowd and I was telling them, hey, this and that. And the priest came in and he said, I'm looking for J.D. Yamas. And the crowd opened. I said, I'm right here. No, 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 wait. I'm looking for a J.D. Yamas that has pipes in her nose and an and a ivy on her arm. I said, sir, that's me. No, he didn't believe me. I said, oh, no, I'm still looking for J.D. Yamas. I said, this is me. And he like kind of like glanced right and I said, let me tell you one thing, priest. I have been forgiven. I have been forgiven. And all those things were taken out of my nose. All those things were taken out of my veins. And you know what? Now that I'm in the presence of God, now that I dwell in the presence of God, I know better. I don't play with God. I'm not a perfect Christian, but I serve a perfect God. Maybe there have been times in your life when you tried to run away from God, from something that God was saying to you by moving out of his presence. Stay in the presence of God, brothers and sisters. Stay in your word. Stay in the Bible studies. Stay in the church. Stay connected with somebody. Stay in the presence of God because that is your safety, staying in the presence of God. But once I understood the incredible privilege of being in the presence of God, we will never again try to get out of the presence of God. If you're alive today because you're running away from God, give him a praise. Hallelujah. If you are in a hospital bed because you turned from God, give him a praise. Hallelujah. If you were in a prison cell but you've been set free today, give him a praise. Because he set you free. Privilege, brothers. It's incredible that God, cho God chose us. Amen. Maybe a lot of you don't agree. Hallelujah. For a woman preaching. But you know what? Take it up with the Holy Spirit, brother. Because remember, it's no longer I that lives, but it's Christ that lives in me. Hallelujah. If God didn't want me to preach, hallelujah, I don't think my pastor would allow me, hallelujah. But if God told her, hey, call that woman to come and preach, that crazy, loud woman, that woman is going to cast out demons, hallelujah. That woman is going to bring my children to me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When we're in the presence of God, brothers and sisters, we got to be obedient to God. Amen? In Deuteronomy 28, we've heard this message many times. We like to hear about praises. We like to hear, you know what? If you come to the church, you're going to get blessed. But there's more than that, brothers and sisters. There's obedience to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Your ways are not his ways. Your thoughts are not his thoughts. Amen. All these blessings will come to you. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. You will listen if you diligently obey the voice of God. You will be blessed coming in and you will be blessed coming out. The Lord will make you the head and he will make, he, and you will not be the tail. You will only be above and you will not be beneath. Oh, that sounds good. Hallelujah. Blessings. Yay. I'm going to be the head. No, you're not. If you have a husband, he should be the head. We need these men to rise up, wake up, shake it off, and stop letting the woman leave the house. Sorry, men. Take it up with the Holy Spirit. If you diligently listen to the voice of God, and it's not just listening, it's being obedient to the voice of God. It's about doing what the voice of God is telling you. Amen? God is a, a pure God. God is a holy God. But there's warning. Tell your brother and sister, there's a warning there's a warning in Deuteronomy 28, 15, 68. It's a long chapter, but you can go and take it home and check it out. 
Don't just read the blessings. Read the warnings. Hallelujah. But it will happen if you will not listen to the voice of the Lord your God by being careful to do all his commandments, which I commanded today. Say today. That all these curses will come out upon you and overtake you. Hallelujah. No, brothers and sisters. The God that we serve is a good God. We don't want, we don't want the, the, the curses to overtake us because we're being disobedient to God. Being disobedient to God is doing what God called you to do. After 21 years serving the Lord, I have to stick with the Lord. I have to pray. I have to come to prayer. I have to come to church. Not because I have to, but because I want to. I want to. Why would you want to be in the church all the time, lady? Are you crazy? Yes, I am. I'm crazy for Jesus. Hallelujah. The one that saved me, the one that delivered me, the one that transformed me, the one that healed me, the one that rescued me, the one that removed that veil out of my, my eyes. Hallelujah. Put this dress down, girl. Brothers and sisters, I know sometimes we got to be funny, right? I'm funny, I guess. I don't know. We got to be obedient to the voice of God. God said that if you trust in him, trust in him with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. God is calling us out. He's calling me out. First of all, he's calling me out. Brothers and sisters, I've seen so many things good happen in my life. Why would I turn around and do whatever I want and let curses overtake me? No, let me tell you, the blessings are overtaking me, my children, my children's children, and their children. I have 18 grandkids, and I think I have like seven great grandbabies. And I'm excited. I'm excited because God of, of mercy, God of opportunities saved my life to see all those blessings. And I think I'm going to be a great grandma in January twice. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I haven't even finished paying, buying Christmas gifts from last year. Whoa. But you know what? Hey. It's a blessing. And I tell my grandkids, man, grandma was bad. Man, grandma was this. Then they're like, really, grandma? You don't look like that. You look like a princess. <laughs> you look like an angel. You look like you don't break no glass. I don't. Not anymore. I was telling my, my granddaughter stories that I, the bad things that I did. Like, wow, grandma. Really? And you look so kind and gentle like a dove. But that was the old Janie mama. So don't try and be like your grandma, okay? Let's give it up for Jesus. For me, to where I'm at today, I need to stay in the presence of God. I love God with all my heart. That I don't care if I have money. I don't care if I have a house. I don't care if I have a husband. I do not care. Because a man that I have, he's a faithful God. He's a good God. He's a merciful God. He's a loving God. He ain't going to hurt me. He ain't going to hurt me. He's going to embrace me. Hallelujah. When I sing these praises and worship that the choir sings, hallelujah, I sing it with all my heart. All my heart, I'm gonna wait on you. Don't just sing the song, wait on him. Don't turn the other way like Jonah and I. Turn this way and really be a man and be a woman and wait on the Lord.
He will be with you in troubles, brothers and sisters. Is anybody in trouble? Wow. Nobody's in trouble. You must be really in the presence of God. That's a good thing. Give it up for yourself. Hallelujah. He is our strong tower, brothers and sisters. He is our strong, strong tower. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the mighty, of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. He is my strong tower. He is my safe place and my fortress. My God in whom I trust. My God, your God is the same God. Amen. If you're struggling with something tonight, let us stand. If you're struggling with the flesh, woo, the flesh, uh-uh. The flesh, the flesh is the flesh. But when you live in the spirit, you ain't gonna give the flesh what it wants. You're gonna give the flesh what the spirit wants, hallelujah. So today is a day that you say, you know what? I don't wanna play with God. You might say, oh, Pastora Janie, that happened to you. I'm smarter than you. I know better than that. Get that pride out of your way, man. Because God, if God shows you, he's gonna sit you down. But why? Because he loves us. Because he, he's a God of mercy. He's a good God, a goodness of God. So tonight, brothers and sisters, take this word with you. I need to dwell in the house of the Lord. When I came to Christ in 2010, I came and I said, God, I don't know about you. I hear all these stories that they're getting healed, they're getting delivered, they're getting transformed. I want you to do that with me. I want you to do that with me. If you heal me from hepatitis, because I used to shoot up heroin, if you heal me from hepatitis, I will serve you for the rest of my life. If you remove depression, confusion from me, I will serve you for the rest of my life. Help me, God. Give me strength because I can't do it by myself. I cried and he heard me. I sought the Lord and he answered me. After 21 years, I still come to the altar and say, God, I need you. I need you, God. Not just because I've been serving 21 years. Oh, I got it all together. I know the Bible. I don't need to go to church. I don't need to go to Bible study. The pastors don't even know what they're talking about. I come to the altar with a sincere heart and say, God, I want to live more years. I want to see my great, great, great grandchildren. If I continue to stay in the presence of God, I will be able to see that. But if I'm playing with God and I'm doing whatever I want and I run from him like Jonah, I ain't gonna end up in a good place. I am a living testimony of the power of God. You are a living testimony of the power of God. Is it easy being a Christian? It's not. I told God, I want to be like you. Like really, really, I want to be with like you. And he said, okay, Janie, you want to be like me? You're going to get talked about. You're going to get betrayed. They're going to abuse you. They're going to use you. They're going to do a lot of things to you like they did to me. Are you ready to be like me? I said, yes, God. Yes, I am. You know why, God? Because you got me through these 20 years. You'll get me through 20 more years and plus. All right, girl. You better continue staying in my presence. You better continue staying in my safety, in the safety place. Because if you try to run away from me, it ain't gonna go good for you. 
if you're ready to come with a sincere heart that you don't want to play with God and you're ready to be lonely, you're ready to be sad and know that God is with you who can be against you, come to the altar. I don't care how many years you have served the Lord, we all have something in our heart. We all have something. Don't think you got it all together, brother or sister, because God sees you, hallelujah. We're not here to judge nobody. We're not here to condemn nobody. God is ready to deliver you. He's ready to heal you, but it's up to you now. We had a deliverance service not too long ago. People were throwing their vapes. People were throwing their cigarettes. People were throwing stuff, material stuff. But there's many of us that we need to throw out the sp physical stuff. We got lust, we got fornication, we got adultery, we got pride. We need to throw it away. We need to throw it away. Ah, sister, you know what you're talking about. I know what I'm doing. I know that what I'm doing is of God. All right, it's all right. I'm not gonna force you, but talk to God and tell him, God, have I been running from you? God, did I turn from your prison like Jonah, Pastora Janie? Because I sure don't wanna end up like them, Lord. God, brothers and sisters, is a merciful God. He wants you to come with a sincere heart. If he healed me, he can heal you. I am so blessed, hallelujah, to say and be called a woman of God. I am so blessed to be called a woman of God. It's not about the curlies. It's not about how I dress. It's about the presence of God living in me, hallelujah. The anointing that is upon me, hallelujah. God has called me, anointed me, and appointed me for such a time as this. Be strong in the Lord, he says. Be strong and courageous, he says. The Bible says, the Bible says in the book of Colossians, it says, and my people who are called by my name were turned from their wicked ways. We need to turn. He said that he will hear. He will hear our land. He will hear our prayers. The Bible is saying, I will deliver you. I will hear your prayers, but you also have to do what I told you to do. Because if I wouldn't be right with God, I don't think I will be a blessed woman. I struggle every day to seek the Lord because I love the Lord. Fall in love with God, brothers and sisters. Fall in love the, with the one that will never leave you nor forsake you. Fall in love with the one that's gonna heal you. Fall in love with the one that's gonna deliver you. Fall in love with the one that saved you, that died on that cross for you and I, but that he rose on the third day. The God that we serve, he's not dead, he's alive. You need to make that God come alive. How? By being like him. Close your eyes, brothers and sisters. Close your eyes. Those of you that are sitting down, you can close your eyes and lift up your hands. Talk to God. Talk to God. Get in the presence of God. Run to your strong tower. The Bible says the righteousness run. Run to the strong tower, to their safe place, which is Jesus. Worship God, brothers and sisters. Worship God.
Thank you, Father. If there is anybody here that wants to give their life to Christ, if there's anybody here that drifted away and fleed away from the presence of God, today is the day that he has made for you to rejoice. Repeat after me, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins. I ask you to come into my heart. Jesus, I know you died on that cross, but I also know that you, you, you raised, rose on the third day. And I ask you to come into my heart, into my life. I want my name written on the book of life. Give me the strength, Father. I have been struggling. I have been fighting. I have been turning from you. But today, I will come to your presence. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's give it up for Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for Jesus.